The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Six double Let your own taste and throat be the judge. For smoothness and mildness, there's never a rough puff in a Lucky Strike. For smoothness and mildness, there's never a rough puff in a Lucky Strike. Yes, let your own taste and throat be the judge. For smoothness and mildness, there's never a rough puff in a Lucky Strike. And that's because LSMFT. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco that gives you smoothness and mildness. And no wonder, for years, Lucky Strike has maintained America's largest and most complete cigarette research laboratory. Prior to the auctions, the buyers for Lucky Strike send sample leaves from all tobacco growing areas to this great laboratory for scientific analysis to help determine which tobaccos are really fine. And this is only one phase of the constant research that helps make possible Lucky Strike's unconditional guarantee. Check the cigarette you're now smoking. Among all leading brands, only the makers of Lucky Strike put an unconditional guarantee on the pack. So smoke a Lucky. Let your own taste and throat be the judge. For smoothness and mildness, there's never a rough puff in a Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Make your next carton Lucky Strike. The Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, for the past two weeks, Jack Benny and his troupe have been in New York. So now let's pick them up on the Super Chief en route to Los Angeles. Mary and Jack are playing a game of gin rummy. Hmm, you sure are lucky, Mary. I play better gin than you do, and yet you always win. Well, it's your own fault, Jack. You don't concentrate on the cards. I do, too. Now, let's see. I know you have three nines, three queens, and the six, seven, and eight of hearts. I know you can't use this card. Here. Here's the deuce of spades. Gin. (laughs) Gin, let me see your hand. There you are. Three eights, four kings, and three deuces. Wait a minute. Where are those two nines you picked up? That was yesterday. (laughs) No. Well, go ahead and deal the cards again. Yeah, I never played in such bad luck in all my life. Hey, Jackson, you got a corkscrew? Here you are, Phil. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> See, I hope I have better luck with this hand than I... Pick up your cards. Okay. I hope I... Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Jack, pick up your last card. Whoops. Oh, boy. What a hand this is. Mary, I'm warning you. Any card you throw, I can use. Go ahead, throw one. It's your turn first. Oh, yes. Here. Gin. (laughs) Jack! Jack, it wasn't my fault. Stop pulling my hair. Oh, I'm sorry, Mary. I didn't mean to get so excited. Well, that's enough gin rummy for me. What do I owe you? Five dollars and 20 cents. All right, I'll pay you tomorrow. Oh, Jack, you always say that. Why don't you pay up as soon as you lose? Because it's so inconvenient. I don't care. Take off your shoe and pay me. (laughs) All right, I'll pay you. I'll pay you. Turn around. Turn around? Just for going to go and take your shoe off? The fives are pinned to my underwear. (laughs) Here's your money. Thanks. You're welcome. You know, Mary, you're the luckiest Hey, Jackson, you got a bottle opener? Here you are, Phil. Thanks. As I was saying, Mary, you're the luckiest person I've ever seen. Oh, I'm not lucky. You just don't know how to play gin rummy. Oh, I don't, eh? Well, I'll tell you what. You won $5 from me. I'll play you one more hand, double or nothing. All right. And we'll use this other deck. Now, shuffle them and shuffle them good. Okay. Show you. Uh, If they're shuffled enough, Mr. Benny, I'll deal. Wait till I cut them, sister. There, go ahead and deal. Just a minute. You don't have to roll up your sleeves. I trust you. (laughs) Go ahead and deal. This time, Mary, I'll show you that you can't be lucky all the time. There's a law of averages, you know. Okay, pick up your cards. I got them, I got them. 
Well, this is more like it. Now, let's see. This card I don't need. Here. I don't want that one. I'll pick. Here, I'll give you this one. Oh, boy, right in the middle. I go down with six. Well, you caught me this time. I'm stuck with 24 points. Good, good. Where's the pencil? Put your cards down first. There. Now, let's see. Six from 24. That gives me... Oh, wait a minute. I can put the seven and eight on your heart run. Where? Oh, yes. Ah, oh, but that still leaves me with nine. You're darn right. Six from nine gives me... Oh, a... wait a minute. I can play my deuce on your three deuces. Where, 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 <laughs> where, 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 where? <laughs> right there. Oh, yeah, but you're still stuck with seven, and six from seven gives me... Uh, hello, kids. Oh, hey, Don, I just clipped Mary. Oh, stop bragging. I only got stuck with this seven of clubs. Seven of clubs? Well, Mary, why don't you put it on his four, five, six? Oh, yes. <laughs> What? That leaves me with nothing. You lose. <laughs> Don. Don. Yes, Jack? Every year, you're voted as radio's best announcer, aren't you? Well, yes, Jack. Well, it shouldn't be hard for you to get another job. <laughs> now, get out of here. Oh, don't be such a sore loser. He's right. What time do we get to Los Angeles, Don? 8.45 tomorrow morning. Gosh, another night on the train. Hey, Jackson, you got any extra glasses in there? <laughs> yes, there are three of them over there. Thanks. <laughs> Say, Jack, I'm a little hungry. How about sandwiches? All right, Mary, I'll go to the diner and get some. I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay. Well, let's see, the diner's down this way. Gee, imagine them charging 95 cents for a sandwich. Do you hear that whistle down the line? I reckon that it's engine number 99. All those prices that you have to pay on the Atchison, Topeka, and the Sand. <laughs> Let's see, the diner must I beg be... your pardon, mister. Yeah? Could you tell me which way the engine is? The engine? Oh, yes, you're going in the wrong direction. It's the other way. Why do you want to know? I'm the engineer. <laughs> The engineer! Hey! Yeah, I hope he finds it before we reach Los Angeles. It'll be the first time I ever went to Catalina by rail. <laughs> now, let's see. The diner should be in this next car. Well, from what you told me, Rochester, I don't see how Mr. Bennett got along without you. Uh-oh. There's Rochester in the washroom talking to one of the porters. I gotta listen to this. Uh, anything else you want to know, Roy? Yeah, besides writing Mr. Bennett's radio show, what else you do for him? Well, I'm his publicity agent. Manager, and last but not least, his personal advisor. Oh, well, are you going to let Mr. Benny go on television? Well, we'll be happy to discuss any order offers. Oh, why did you say that so loud? I want people to hear him. We ain't had any yet. <laughs> hmm. Yes, sir, Mr. Benny won't do a thing without my approval. Rochester, another thing I've been wanting to ask you. Uh, how old is Mr. Benny? Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine? <laughs> Well, I thought that was just a joke on the radio. Well, in the vernacular, we people in show business, that is known as a running gag. Well, uh, how long has it been running? Two years longer than the Atchison, and Topeka and Santa Fe. <laughs> Rochester! Uh-oh! Is that Mr. Benny? It ain't your host! <laughs> Rochester, I don't like you discussing my private affairs. Yes, sir. And will you please go to the diner and get some ham sandwiches for me and Miss Livingston? Boss, would you mind making that cheese? Why? I just told Roy I was your personal advisor. <laughs> all right, all right. Just get the sandwiches. Yes. Sir. And take that sign off your back. I'm not considering television till next year. I think he'd know better than to talk about me in front of strangers. Let's see. Oh, here's Mary's compartment. Gee, it took you a long time. Where are the sandwiches? I sent Rochester. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hey, kid, I haven't seen you all day. What have you been doing? Oh, I was in the club car looking out the window, counting the telephone poles. I wanted to see if my mother was right. What? Well, she says there are 119,726 poles between Kansas City and Albuquerque. <laughs> well, how would your mother know? She dug the holes for them. <laughs> Why do I ask them? Why do I ask them? <laughs> Jack, would you like to play a little more gin rummy till the sandwiches get here? Well, 
All right, Mary. Move over, Don. Keep your mouth shut. Okay. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, Jack, I haven't seen your riders since we left New York. Are they on this train? No, they took another one. Well, why don't you have them come with us? Are you ashamed of them? Ashamed of them? Of course not. My four riders are very famous. Three of them have their pictures in the brown derby, and the other has his in the post office. <laughs> Oh, yes. Dead or alive, Sam. Yeah. Mendel's got a private room. Uh, say, this is a pretty good hand you dealt me. Hey, Mr. Benny, why don't you put those two kings together? Be quiet. You're giving my whole hand away. And anyway, they're queens. Gee, if she'd just th throw you the seven of spades, you could go right down. Dennis! <laughs> Let's see. I'll give you this one, Mary. The eight of hearts. I'll take it. And here's the three of diamonds. I don't need it. I'll pick. Oh, that's a beaut. Now, let's see. What'll I give you? Give her the end card. No, no, no. I'll give her this one. Here. I'll take it. Hmm. Here, Jack, I'll give you this one. I don't need it. I'll pick. Now, let's see. Give her the end card. No, you saw what she picked. I'll give her this one. Oh, no, 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 not that card. Give her the end card. <laughs> well, maybe you're right. She did pick up those other two. Here, Mary. Gin. <laughs> Dennis. I guess I've only got one show now. <laughs> Look, it. why don't you go back to the club car and count telephone poles? No, I gotta practice my song for Sunday's broadcast, so I'll see you later. Uh, what song are you gonna do this Sunday, Dennis? The Dream is a Wish Your Heart Makes from Walt Disney's new picture, Cinderella. Would you like to hear it? Yeah, sing it. Do anything. Just leave me play. Oh. Deal, Mary. Oh. That was wonderful. Thank you, Mary. It was great, kid, but when you do it on the show... Now, listen, Dennis, sing it a little faster because we're kind of tight for time. Okay. Now, go ahead, Mary. It's, it's your draw. Hey, Jackson. <laughs> what? You got a couple aspirins? <laughs> oh. Oh. So 
So you finally got yourself a little headache, eh? Well, don't expect any sympathy from me, Phil. Jen. No, thanks, Mary. I've had all that. Phil! <laughs> can mean something else. <laughs> Mary, look, this hand doesn't count because I wasn't watching. Now, deal the cards again. Come in. Telegram for Mr. Harris. Oh, I'll take it, Porter. Here, this is for you. Mmm, a dollar. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Well, go ahead and read it, Phil. What does it say in the dollar? In the telegram. <laughs> Go ahead, Phil, read it Let's see um, Oh, no well, Who's it from, Phil? The boys in my band What does it say? Hurry home, we're in again <laughs> Well, look, I better send them a wire Tell them when I'm going to arrive See you later, huh? Well, come on, Jack Let's finish our game of gin no, no, man. I'm going out to look for Rochester and see what's taking them so long with the sandwiches. Okay, and hurry back. I'm starved. Okay, Mary. Gee, this trip has been exciting. Saw the Mississippi, the Grand Canyon, the Dollar Tip. <laughs> oh, well... Oh, there's that cute little baby. Do you mind if I hold him, madam? No, no, not at all. Hello, baby. Ah, <laughs> oh, look at him. He's so cute. And his eyes are the same color as mine. Lake Louise Blue. <laughs> How old is he, lady? 39. <laughs> what? Weeks. Oh, oh. <laughs> you know, lady, yesterday when you were in the diner, I came through here and I played with him. <laughs> Didn't I, baby? Uh-huh. Jim. <laughs> He's luckier than Mary. <laughs> Here, take him back, lady. You have a lovely child. Thank you. You'll find $5 he won pinned to his diaper. <laughs> hey, what a little doll that baby is. Cutest thing I Excuse me. Oh, oh, it's you, Jack. I was just going up to the diner. Oh. Well, Don, I sent Rochester up there for some sandwiches. If you see him, hurry him up, will you? All right, I will. Oh, Don, before you go, there's something I gotta tell you. The most amazing thing happened a little while ago. What is it, Jack? What happened? Well, I was in Mary's compartment with Phil when the porter brought him a telegram. Yes? And Phil gave him a dollar tip. Well, what about it? What about it? <laughs> Don, he gave him a dollar tip. A dollar just for bringing him a telegram. He didn't press his suit or anything. <laughs> Well, Jack, there's nothing unusual about that. You mean that you... Certainly, certainly, all the time. Gosh. Jack, in these times when you're in a hotel or on a train and people do a personal service for you, it's customary to give them a dollar tip. It is? Yes, and you might as well get used to it. I will not. <laughs> All right, Don, you go on to the diner. I'll see you later. Oh, uh, wait a minute, Jack. I just remembered something. I've, I've got a surprise for you. A surprise? Yes. Step right over here to compartment H. Gee, I wonder what the... Right here? Yeah, yeah. Open the door. Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> well, the Sportsman Quartet. Hello, fellas. What are they doing on the train? Oh, they got on at Albuquerque. They've been there all week on a personal appearance. Well, Don, I'm glad the boys are with us and that they'll be on the show Sunday. Are they happy that they're going home? You know, back to Los Angeles? Ooh, are they? <laughs> Listen to this, Jack. <laughs> we love those dear hearts and gentle people who live in our hometown. Though it may 
they shower most any hour. They'll never ever let you drown. They read Luella from Friday to Monday. In fact, the whole week through. We may have fog, smog, or sun on Sunday. It makes no difference, no one's blue. We feel so welcome at Hollywood and Vine. Love to eat inside that derby they call brown. The Brea Tar Pits, the Farmer's Market, they're all a part of our hometown. There is something in the air that you can't find anywhere. When the smudge pot smudge, you never feel the heat. There's a Chinese picture show that Sid Grumman runs, you know, where they have cement for stars to put their feet. We love those dear, we love those dear, dear hearts and lucky people who smoke in our hometown. They smoke those lucky, they smoke those lucky because, because a lucky will never ever let you down. They are so free and so easy on the draw. Take a tip from one who knows and you will see. There ain't a rough puff, it's fine tobacco, so like an LSMFT. It's always LSMFT. Yes, LS, LSMFT. Fellas. <laughs> fellas, that was great. It'll be wonderful on the show. Well, Don, I think I'll go back and play a little more gin with Mary and then have the birth made up and go to sleep. I'm going to turn in early, too. Okay, Don, see you later. I'll soon be back home in California And I'll pay my income tax when I get there And if I have to I'll play my fiddle in the middle of old Pershing Square <laughs> Well, about another hour of gin and I'll go to bed Oh, boy, this birth feels good. It's nice to be able to stretch out. Yeah, but stop stretching over to my side, will you, Jack? I'm sorry, Don. I don't know why you insist on traveling like this. These berths are only built for one. Don, you know as well as I do, it's hard to get accommodations on the Super Chief. We're lucky we're in here. I suppose so. Anyway, I'm too cramped to argue. All right, then drop it. You don't have to get huffy about it, you know. Look, I'm not getting huffy. Hey, fellas, be quiet. How do you expect me to sleep here between you two? <laughs> I'm sorry, Dennis. Good night, Don. There he goes, Don. Every night it's the same thing, snoring and mumbling. Ah, uh, don't worry, kid. We'll be home tomorrow. I'd like to punch him right in the nose. <laughs> ah, shut up! I can't go to sleep. Well, Dennis, why don't you try counting sheep? Counting sheep? Yeah. Well, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, that's a sheepdog. <laughs> Seven, eight, nine, ten. Jim. Union Station. Your luggage will be taken to the cab stand. Ah, well, Mary, here we are, home at last. Uh, can I brush you off, Miss Livingston? Yes, please. Well, thank you. Uh, can I brush you off, Mr. Day? Yes, please. Thank you. Brush you off, Mr. Wilson? Please. Now, 
Now, Don, Don, if you'll turn around, he can brush your back. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, brush you off, Mr. Benny? Yes, please. Thank you, Porter. Here. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't have change for that dollar, Mr. Benny. I don't want change. Keep it. This dollar is for you. Come on, Mary. I love those dear hearts and gentle people. Gee, it's good to be home, isn't it, Jack? Yeah. Let's go over here to the cab stand. Extra, extra, get your paper here. Extra, read all about it. Jack Benny tips Porter a dollar. <laughs> Gee, I knew it would be in the papers, but how did they get it so soon? Come on, Mary, everybody's staring at me. Train leaving on track five for Anaheim, Azusa, and Cucamonga. Oh, boy, even he sounds good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the American Heart Association has set a goal of $6 million to be used for research, for education, and for community service. Heart disease is our greatest challenge because it takes more lives than any other illness and causes tremendous disability. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, won't you please help support the 1950 heart campaign? Send your contributions to Jack Benny, Box 500, New York City. <laughs> Jack will be back in just a moment, but first... Let your own taste and throat be the judge. For smoothness and mildness. There's never a rough puff in a Lucky Strike, and that's because... L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Listen to what Mr. J. Coy Smith, an independent tobacco warehouseman from Greenville, North Carolina, recently said. I'm in my 37th year as a warehouseman, and down through the years, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy fine tobacco. Light, ripe tobacco that makes mild, smooth smoking. I've smoked Luckies for 31 years. Millions of smokers, including the famous dancing star of stage and screen, Ray Bolger, take a tip from the experts and smoke Lucky Strike. Just recently, Mr. Bolger said, Cigarettes like dancing must be smooth to be really enjoyable. Naturally, I go for Lucky's fine tobacco. And for your own real deep-down smoking enjoyment, light up a Lucky. Let your own taste and throat be the judge. For smoothness and mildness, there's never a rough puff in a Lucky Strike. Get a carton today. Well, Rochester, here we are at home. The house looks good, doesn't it? Sure does, boss. I'm going upstairs, take a shower, a shave, and get cleaned up. Okay, boss, and while you're doing that, I'll unpack your bags. No, no, Rochester, don't touch those bags. Why not? As soon as I get cleaned up, I gotta rush back to the railroad station. For what? I gotta catch a train. I'm going back to Washington for the White House Photographer's Ball. But, boss, that don't make sense. If you're going right back to Washington, why'd you come all the way home from New York? I told you to take a shower. There's a water shortage there. <laughs> Have a cab here in 15 minutes. Good night, Claudette. Come on. Sure to send your contributions to the 1950 Heart Campaign to Jack Benny, Box 500, New York City. And be sure to hear Dennis Day in the day in the life of Dennis Day. Stay tuned for the Amos Nandy Show, which follows immediately. <laughs> this is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> 